This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will cover the basic mover. Before we start, I'd like to recommend that you set up a builder room. This is not the room for your map. It's a separate room where you can build all your brushes, your complex brushes, and experiment with them to see how they look. And then when you're ready, you can intersect those brushes and then move them to your actual map. So I've uh, built one that's big, that's 2,048 units cubed, but you can build it any size you like. And the next advantage is that a lot of times you're going to be working with this red brush and the editor's sometimes a little bit buggy, so you may need to go right click and reset everything. And by having this here in your builder room, will save you a lot of time. So let's get started with the mover. A mover is going to be either a door or a lift or anything else that moves in your map. And in this particular video, I'd like to just make a very basic lift so you can see how it's done. After that, I'm gonna put a link in the description to a really good tutorial on the web that covers all the different types of movers. So first, I have this little structure here, and this is 512 units high, so that a player would not be able to get to it without the help of a lift. I've also built these two rails um, because they are where the mover will be moving along, just to give you a little bit more immersion in the game, as opposed to having a floating platform. Over here, I've built a complex brush, which is basically a cube and another little frame around it. And then these two little supports where they will go along the rails that I showed you. So when I put this into position, it's gonna be perfectly fitting into these two rails. So what you need to do is first and foremost, take your brush and make sure you reset everything. So right click on the brush, reset all, and then move it over to that complex brush that you made. So that it completely surrounds that brush. like so and let me turn on the joystick icon so you can see it dynamically and make sure that it's completely surrounding the whole brush and the last thing I'm going to do before I click intersect I just want to change this grid to 2 so it's a much smaller grid size now and the reason for that is because these little supports are only four units wide. And that may seem small, but they look really good in the game. And so I need to get the grid down to two in case I have a brush that's four units wide. So now that I'm ready to go, I'm going to click on intersect. And I'm now going to move this red wireframe into position. And I'm going to put this on the ground because the ground will be the starting position for this lift. So make sure in all three windows that it is perfectly aligned. And you can also do a reality check here to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And this will be what we call the base position for your mover. And that is to say that this is where the mover will always be resting until it's activated. So once you have perfectly put the brush, the red brush where you want it to, then you can come over here and click on this, which is the add mover brush button. And now what you'll need to do is you'll need to move away this red one. So hold down the control key and the left mouse button and just drag that away. And there is your mover. 
going to click on it so you can see it better. So you'll notice it's purple, and this is the resting position. So the very first thing you need to do just to make this thing work, at the very minimum, is to right click on the brush, and go to Movers, and then Keys. So this is the base position, that's key zero, so what you want it to do is you want it to go to the next position which we're going to call key one. So you click on key one. Now you're going to take this mover brush and drag it all the way up to where it's got to go, which is up here at the very top of the roof. You want it to go right to there. And make sure that it's still aligned in all of your views. And the reality check here so you can see. So here is the final position for it. And when you get to that spot, then, oh, actually, I'm just going to move this up. And then once you get to this spot, you can now right click on it again. And now you're going to click on zero because what you're saying is that when you get to this position, you want to go back to the base position, which is on the ground. So you click on key zero and that's it. So that is actually the bare minimum that you need to do to make this mover work. But I want to show you some of the important properties that you can adjust. So you right click on the brush, select mover properties, go to mover. The first thing I want to bring your attention to is this one which is called B dynamic light movement and I always change this to true. And what that means is, while the mover is moving, the lighting is recalculated. So if your mover is going from a dark area up to a lighter area, the lighting will change on the surface, and it just looks a lot better. So I would change that to true. That's the first thing. The second thing here, for now, we'll leave it as this. What this says is any player or any bot bumping into your mover will trigger that mover to go. So we'll leave that one for now. The next one is the de de delay time, and right now it's set to zero, which means that as soon as you bump into that mover, it's going to go. So I'm just going to introduce a slight delay, not too much, but a slight delay that gives you time, the player time, to get on and step onto the thing before it goes up. This one here is moving encroachment, and I like to choose ignore. So that means that let's say a player is accidentally underneath the mover, this thing will still come down. It's not going to be interrupted. If you had chosen return, then it would bounce back up and it's not really great. So I choose ignore for that one. The next thing is move time. So here it's set to one second by default, which is fine. This is also two by default, which is fine because I only have the two keys. I had the zero, which is my base key, and then the one which was up on the top. So I have two num keys. You can go up to a maximum of eight. So you can build some pretty complex movers if you want to. And this one here is called stay open time, which I think four seconds is a bit long, but I'll leave it for now so that when we try it in game, you'll see that four seconds is probably too long. You may want to reduce that down to two or, or even one second. The next thing I want to show you are the mover sounds which are here because right now that mover will work but silently. So you need to come up here to the sound browser and you need to open a package. There are two main ones. One is Doors Ancient and one is Doors Modern. So let's just take Doors Modern for now. Open that and you can see here you have a whole bunch of door sounds. So you can first of all if let's try this one which is looping and you see that goes with this start and this end. So let's just take those just, just for the sake of the tutorial. I'll take those ones for now. Let's take the loop first. Then you come over here into mover sounds and the moving ambient sound, that's your looping one. So you put that there. And then for the opening sound, we've got to pick one which would be the start of it. So let's take that as the opening sound. 
and then when it's closing you want the end of it which is this one so let's put that as the closed sound here now of course you can fill out all these sounds if you want to but just for the sake of this tutorial I'll use the three one when it starts to open one when it's moving and when it comes comes back down so these are the bare minimum that you need to have a decent mover let's just quickly go into the game so you can see how that works there it is here and you can see how it's perfectly aligned with the two railings that I made so you can see that four seconds is a bit long to wait so if I were a player I would probably come up this way I probably only need maybe one second for this thing to be open so I would change that and that's basically all you need for a mover you need your nice looking brush some decorative brushes here to give you the sense of immersion which you have a, a truly working lift instead of a floating platform and then basically change a few sounds adjust the timing a bit and you're good to go and this one over here I just built another one to show you the ancient door sounds so that's more of a stone door you know for a castle or something and uh, there's lots of sounds anyways for you to to choose from all you need to do is open that doors ancient package So it's very simple to make a mover. I'm going to put, first of all, a link in the bottom in the description so you can do more research on the movers. But secondly, I'm also going to add a screenshot of the mover properties at the end of this video so you can press pause and take note of all the things that I changed.